All right, in this uh, bonus video, uh, there's a couple of things I realized I missed after going through some other conversations. First, there's a couple of arguments for why this should be um, a seed of deceit instead of false seed that I, I didn't realize um, yet. For example, um, if you look in the parallelism of, of the um, construct chain, you say um, in verse 3, B'nai uh, Onana, Zera, uh, Mina If, um, Vatizne. So, B'nai um, Onana, which would be sons of the sorceress, that's. B'nai is a, a construct form, it's not the absolute form. So, there's no way you can translate, like, Onana, for example, as an adjective. It doesn't describe anything. So those are going to be two nouns. And Zera I mean not if you might be able to translate children from like sorcery or children from adultery and harlotry. The problem is the rabbinic tradition just doesn't follow that. Like the Malbim, I think it's the Malbim, who states that the adulterer is the father and the harlot is the mother. And every rabbinic source I found translates these as nouns and not as adjectives. So Grammatically, you might be able to translate it that way, but you'd go, be going up against all of tradition. But anyway, um, there's a bigger argument here. Um, is there a um, yeah, seed of the adulterer and the harlot? Um, is everyone here the literal seed of one adulterer and one harlot? Because if not, this isn't a literal translation. This is figurative. It's metaphorical. So we have another proof of metaphorical seed right here. Now, if you want to say seed of adultery and harlotry, well, then adultery and harlotry don't actually produce seed anyway. So again, like in, in, in either case, verse 3 itself is a precise counterexample. It's seed and it is definitely metaphorical. But also, in the next verse, uh, yilde pesha, yilde, that is the construct form, not the absolute form. So there's no grammatical way to translate the Hebrew into um, wicked children, like transgressing children, because Yilde guarantees that whatever follows it will be a noun, and that little dash and that the Masoretes added just further reinforces it. Pesha is a noun. There's no grammatical way around it. So we have, again, we have two construct chains. Then we have the parallelism introducing another guaranteed construct chain. So is there a check here, like, more plausibly going to be false seed, or is it going to be, you know, seed of deceit? Well, if you keep the parallelism, it's going to be seed of deceit. And again, this is why all the rabbinic translations go with that. Now, somebody brought to my attention, and I mentioned this before, actually, in the original video, the, the Targum on Isaiah 57 does veer, um, the Targum is not a literal translation, it's a weird paraphrase, or what you might be able to call like a drosh, like a homiletical interpretation. So we can compare the reg the original translation to the Targum translation, but you draw near people of um, a gene ration whose works are evil, whose plant was of a holy plant, but they were adulterers and harlots. Well, again, literally, there's no way you can get the grammar to say they are adulterers and harlots. Explicitly, it says they are children of adulterers and harlots. But again, the Targum doesn't translate it. It sort of loosely interprets it. Sort of like if you think of like the message for the Christian translations. It's a really very loose translation that sort of gets the gist of it. It does not translate the words. It's more of a thought-for-thought -thought translation. And as you can see here, the Targum is very much a thought-for-thought -thought translation, and not even that, it's, it's, it sort of follows the general tones. But again, there's no way you can get a technical analysis of the Hebrew from the Targum. And even the next verse, who are you mocking, um, or yeah, of whom do you make your sport or mockery, and before whom do you open your mouth, do you continue speaking great things, are you not rebellious children, a lying seed? Well, as we've seen in the previous, um, the previous slide, you can't translate the thing rebellious children because yilde is in the construct form, it's not in the absolute form. And therefore you can't, and therefore a lying seed as well. These are parallels, just as this, just as, you know, yilde pesha and, you know, this thing translating it or interpreting it as rebellious children is not an indicator that yilde pesha means rebellious children. It also doesn't mean lying seed. 
And Tovia sort of indirectly goes with this. You know, if you read from his Let's Get Biblical book, he talks about the Peshat, the principal analysis, that's sort of like what the rabbis would think of as the grammatical historical meaning. Then there's a, a second and distinct stream called the Drash, meaning it is a distinct and different and non-overlapping interpretation that, that delves into deep and profound things. And that's like Midrash. It's derived from the Drash. Now, the Midrashic interpretation cannot ever nullify or contradict the, um, the Peshat. Even if it appears to contradict it, it's supplemental meaning. In other words, you can't start with the drosh and say, therefore, the Peshat, the plain literal meaning, is this. So any use of the Targum to try to give you um, a direct translation of the Hebrew grammar simply, it, it shows their ignorance. They don't understand like what the Targum is. And so the Targum is not a counterexample. It, it certainly doesn't follow the grammar, as I showed you. And I gave you two additional arguments. There's no way this thing can mean false seed. It means seed of deception. And of course, Tovia knows this. He knows the Jewish translations. He knows, uh, he knows the grammar here. But he, he sort of made a, a career off of exploiting the ignorance of Christians and Jews. Just like, yeah, you don't understand the Hebrew, and so he can just, just BS his way through anything. And everyone's just going to sit there, even the Christians who are, you know, maybe know a little bit of Hebrew or something, sit there and not because they haven't heard the arguments before. And yeah, this is just some just some awful charlatanry, and I hope to continue to correct this with other interpretations. Okay, Shalom Aleichem.